Good morning. How are you doing today, PW? I am doing great and all the more excited to be with you because I'm a native Charlottean. You are? We're, okay. Yes. What, what, what part of Charlotte, dude? I uh, originally uh, from Mars Park area, went to um, Hawthorne Junior High School and then Mars Park High School. Oh, my God. My essential job is over there at the Park Road Shopping Center at that Harris Teeter store. <laughs> I, I know it. We. I mean, I, we we can talk about, you know, all the best places that no longer exist. Isn't that uh, the truth? Oh, my God. That is so cool. So so now what 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 drew you away from Charlotte? Because it's such the magnetic city. We're one of the top 15 of the nation, they say. <laughs> um, so I went off to college and uh, got into topics of technology and policy and um, many years back moved to Washington, D.C. area and have been here working on these topics uh, ever since. But um, yeah, I live up um, in D.C., but, you know, miss uh, the Queen City and in particular being able to get um, really important things like uh, sweet tea and cheer wine. <laughs> yeah, but uh, OK, when you bring up cheer wine, have you been to actual uh, 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 one of the little soda shops in Salisbury where it has to come with a crushed ice? <laughs> oh, gosh. We're really getting down into the weeds of it. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's, that's, what, that's what's fun about being here. I mean, the, you know, everybody talks about Krispy Kreme across the nation, and it's like, no, dude, this is where it started. Yes, indeed. Um, so, yeah, no, it's... Uh, it, it's also funny to see, you know, just like you had, you know, what takes off and is known nationwide and kind of, you know, what are those um, things back home? And but yeah. Uh, and then when I come back and visit family, I guess the biggest, um, you know, sort of challenge for me is like the city's grown so much yes. that, you know, at times I need a GPS to get around. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> well, especially with you being over there in the Myers Park area, you know, the corner of Queens, Queens and Queens. What do you do? I mean, there's so many people that get lost over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, let, this podcast, I, I'm telling you, it is the right place at the right time. It's authentic. It's haunting. It's unforgettable because you take the subject of like war and, and you say, hey, look, there's a definition behind this purpose. Yeah, I really appreciate that. So the idea of um, the podcast is that in many ways it's it's like a um an audio book uh so we um broke it down into a series of episodes that essentially tell the story of social media and how it shaped our world and we skip back and forth you know everything from um episodes that look at the rise of isis to um ice bucket challenge uh to go back in history and look at how other technologies like the radio played out in world war ii to more recent episodes like you know how social media affected everything from um the uh recent election in january um six uh, and essentially what we're trying to do is tell the story of what we call like war. And so if you think of um, cyber war as the hacking of computer networks, like war is the hacking of people on the networks where by driving ideas viral through likes and shares online, you can shape what people think about the world around them, including even the truth of the world around them. And so that's what we try and tell the story of. And, you know, we've got, you know, everything from um, old audio clips, as I mentioned, of radio shows to um, uh, what people were saying doing on January 6th itself. Uh, it's been a really cool experience to bring it all together. I'll tell you what, PW, in, in listening to the episodes that are on iHeartRadio right now, the one thing that, that came to me immediately was uh, Putin is playing the war wrong. That, that he should have been listening to your podcast because why is he destroying a nation to take over a nation that he's blowing up? Because in, in, in listening to your podcast, social media is, is, is how it's happening. The episode in um, Ukraine is, uh, wow, that's just a, exactly, um, and you know one of the interesting things that's come out of it is um, this question of how Putin and Russia that were you know the, the masters of information warfare, uh, they used it to paralyzed Ukraine in 2014 to they intervened in um, elections, not just in the United States in 2016, but over 30 other democracies had their elections targeted by um, Russian information warfare over the last five years. And then when it comes time for this most recent war in Ukraine, um, they're stymied. They lose. The tables are turned on them. Yep. And essentially what happens is um, Putin, uh, they try and fight the last war 
where they were pushing against an open door and they're coming against the Ukrainians and and also the U.S. government that's watched what's happening over the last couple of years, learned and twists it and turns it and pushes back. And so um, in many ways, Putin meets his match in Zelensky, who is just better at it. And Zelensky, you know, goes from this little known figure. Um, he's only at 23% levels of popularity in Ukraine. And then suddenly um, he's this global icon and people are putting, you know, hashtags stand with Ukraine across TikTok and Facebook and Twitter. And it has a real world effect um, inside Ukraine, Zelensky goes from 23% levels of popularity to 91% to the popularity of the Ukrainian cause worldwide, leads not only the United States to provide aid, but nations as far away as Japan and Australia. So it's just really fascinating um, episode about the, the real world effect of like war. One of the things that I that I found very interesting in in your podcast, like war, is the fact that you you kind of give a better definition of what national security is because people don't understand that the average everyday person they see it in the news, but I don't think they understand it. That um, it, I really appreciate that, and I think you know the challenge is not just everyday people, but we see the same thing in our government is. You know, we're no longer in a world where um, just the number of tanks or bullets um, determines your national security. Uh, there are a wider array of threats um, when we think about everything from um, climate change to violent extremism to even, you know, nation state powers like a Russia and a China. It's not about the number of tanks. It's about their uh, or bullets. It's their ability to, um, you know, send computer bytes with um, cyber threats to how they can intervene inside your own nation's politics through information warfare, through like war. And so you need this broader, uh, more holistic definition of national security. It also means, again, um, there's our own individual role in this. And that's one of the lessons that we're trying to share with this is, you know, look, we're trying to entertain people. Um, the episodes hopefully are compelling. They're interesting. You'll learn something. But it's also about understanding that each of us, you know what, um, when we're online, um, we're not just a target audience. Right. We're right. also a potential participant. Our clicks, our likes, our shares determine what people in our own network, our friends, our families see. And so we've got to be a little bit more responsible about that too. Does it scare you that Kanye and Elon Musk want to take over these networks? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what the challenge of that is, um, whether you are a fan of um, Kanye's, you know, I'll say early music, not more recent, or um, you like the way Tesla's look, is that you need to recognize that both of them are the phenomena of um, an internet troll. Um, and we've seen the same thing um, in our politics, internet troll, someone who deliberately does something provocative, um, often offensive to draw eyes, to get people to react emotionally because they derive value for it. They want the attention because they think they gain from the attention. And then they often play the game of, was just asking questions or why are you get mad, getting mad at it? It was just a joke, but it was kind of serious, but it was just a joke. And um, look, that that trolling, um, it goes back to the earliest days of social media. And unfortunately, um, it's still effective today. Um, and again, that's one of the things that we need to be a little bit uh, wary of. Um, I think the question about um, both of them is they seem to not only want to be a player in the game, but also own the game, yep. so to speak. And um, that has consequences for the rest of us. I think they also don't realize um, how much it's going to have consequences for them. Um, I think both of them are not going to enjoy owning a social media network as much as they think. Yep, you're absolutely right about that. Growing up, were you a Bob and Sherry fan? John Boy and Billy, Ace and TJ, who did you listen to? Oh, gosh, now you're going to date me. So um, uh, John Boy and Billy for me, yeah. but um, my mom was, uh, you know, definitely um, uh, with Sherry. And But remember, I mean, you want to date it. It goes back to before Bob was on radio. Remember, he was on yep. TV. Yep. Uh, so, um, yeah, that that hopefully gives a little bit of an insight of um, where we were at. But, yeah, you know, again, there's also, I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, the 
what I love about Charlotte is the way the radio stations um, kind of changed which music. So if I name one station, it might have been alternative music yep. at a certain point in time, <laughs> and then it became hip hop, and then it became country. Um, and you know, so uh, I'm almost leery of naming you know one station because someone will be like, "Oh, you like that kind of music?" I'll be like, "Well, but you know, in the early '90s, it was this." <laughs> so true. So, and I've lived through every one of them. <laughs> it's just so crazy, dude. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future, and maybe you know what we need. We need to meet for lunch sometime when you come to Charlotte over there at the soda shop, over there at the Park Road Shopping Center. All right. Uh, you bring the cheer wine. All right. I'll do it. <laughs> You'd be brilliant. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carl.